Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this is going to be a quick video, and this is something that I do plan on doing for at least the majority of the showdown slates, unless things are just going on or whatnot, for just subscriber only videos uh, related to the showdown and stuff. Um, like today is pretty, you know, at least interesting for me because I'm going to be on the road um, today and will most likely not be able to really adjust uh, anything. Luckily, uh, this slate is pretty free from like any like injury news, uh, anybody that's like going to be questionable entering the week uh, or at least this game. Thank God I don't have to worry about that. Um, but what I've previously done a lot of times in NFL is enter, you know, the $100 single, mainly just focus on single entry for showdowns. And that's usually the 50s, the 40s, you know, the 27, the, 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 all the 12, all the $12 that I can find and stuff like that. I'm going to shift slightly or actually, I'm going to shift quite a lot, at least to start the season, because I think I have uh, at least the interest or the new players entering DFS may give me a buffer to, you know, to allow me to have mistakes if this approach doesn't seem to work out. Uh, but what I mainly want to do is target, because I still have access to them, is target a lot of the 20 maxes that are 3 2 and $1 contests. So, you know, versus what I used to do on showdown slates is, you know, throw 300 and 350 or 400 on, like, all the, the single interest showdowns with, you know, the one line that I uh, wanted to play. I'm going to do roughly around the same value, but enter the 20 uh, max lineups. And the reason being is since I've just ran into more success playing the NBA showdowns and stuff, I want to take more of those approaches and apply it to 20 maxes for... NFL Showdown, just because I really haven't done that in the past. Um, and so what I want to do is I'm not going to necessarily show the lineups, but I wanted to talk through where I'm going. So, like, first off, uh, you know, Jess, Brian Jester talked about it in, in his video today, um, but it, it is probably true that if you would probably take, if you would approach the entire NFL season and you approach every showdown with the expectation that the game hits the under and it underperforms, like, you know, scoring-wise and stuff, and defenses, kickers, and stuff like that are far more important, you would probably end up being profitable at the end of the year due to the fact that people don't want to play that way. Um, that's, you know, a very high likelihood for any game to, you know, hit the under um, and to be bogged down and so on and so forth. Um, but, at least with that said, I almost never target games like that. Uh, I haven't really truly found success in that even when the games do hit that I've just always struggled uh, constructing lineups for low scoring games and so you're going to see I mean this, these are my current exposures right now and outside of making like any you know small changes with exposure I don't really foresee me running into like different exposure stuff or, or different um, things and so when I enter a slate like this typically you or what I always do I always play showdown like this is receiver or tight end in the captain position. That's it. Sure, maybe some pass catchers depend on how cheap they are, which we'll get into the captains that I'm probably going to target here, but I almost exclusively do that. Or if it's a quarterback captain, which uh, pretty much Josh Allen, Burrow, uh, Mahomes, Jackson, just not when they're playing together, it's you know just a 5-1 slaughter, and I'm usually fading the wide receiver for number one for that team. That's usually how I go about this. But in a game like this, I want, and, you know, this is just how I play, Mahomes and Jackson are locked in. I, I don't see situations to where they aren't ending the slate as either the two highest scoring guys or at least two in the top three. I, I just don't see that unless, like, you know, the, the game hits the under or one of these idiots get injured or whatever. And so for me, in my 20 max, I'm locking both those guys in. Uh, the way I approach contests are to try and envision who is the optimal lineup, or who is in the optimal lineup, who are the optimal players, and uh, you know stuff like that. Uh, so due to that, I'm basically working with, you could argue, four positions. Uh, the three flexes are completely different because we have so many, you know, we have such a variety up top for whatever the captain could be. Um, but I'm working with three flexes. Now, if I'm targeting and looking at Mahomes and Jackson, my train of thought would be that would, when we start looking at what these guys are in terms of salary, okay, and you start building lineups and stuff, that makes it very unlikely that you're going to be able to really afford a lot of the guys directly below them in my type of construction. Like, uh, this is all the stuff I'm aware of when I'm going in. Now, I mean, I'm probably, I'm, 
probably going to bump Kelsey up after this to at least like 15 or 20% ownership in my exposure in the flex. Um, although I do believe I have him a few in, a ca- in, in the captain, which we'll talk in a second. But like, whenever I approach things like this in esports, any type of showdown, I'm usually taking a very aggressive stand. And that is just based on the projections. Now, this is on Saberson because I'm doing this super early. Um, just because I, I got to hit the road. I got to be in Mobile in like seven hours. Um, but when we look at like Henry's, you know, true projections and stuff, like if Baltimore is down, there there is a real likelihood that Justice Hill is going to take, you know, a lot of the third down role from Derrick Henry. There's a real chance that, you know, not only does Lamar Jackson, you know, it, gonna throw a shitload anyway, real chance he can steal a touchdown on the floor or on the ground. Real chance Lamar Jackson can run, especially if people are targeting, or the defense is targeting Derrick Henry, um, Lamar Jackson has a real chance of, um, you know, like, like, truly, like, taking away from Derrick Henry and stuff, and, um, just when I'm, when I'm constructing stuff, I'm, I'm personally just gonna fade, uh, Derrick Henry, because I don't see truly a lot of situations to where he is gonna be the de facto guy on the slate in terms of outscoring everybody, because that means he's scored like three touchdowns on the ground. He's caught like seven catches. I just don't see that. Um, it, it, I mean, it, clearly not. Like, he could be one touchdown 110 yards. But, like, still don't really see that. Uh, when I'm constructing stuff, I'm probably, uh, you know, I'm just not going to, to, to Derrick Henry. So I'm doing a full fade on him. Going back to how I usually play, I usually do not play the defenses. Back when I would do the single entry and stuff, which I enjoy doing because it was it was just this on like just more an aggressive a much more aggressive level I would never play defenses just never okay they get a pick six they get a fumble recovery touchdown that's just how it is I lose those six points um I have usually been more times than not okay like financially like my, my slate is not ruined you know truly fading uh, defense unless it's a low scoring game etc cetera, etc cetera. so I just say like I can't beat that when that happens I'm just not going to even play for that to happen then and acknowledge that uh, you know I'm giving up you know slight percentage on whatever the outcome could be in those situations but I'm not playing uh, the Ravens and or Chiefs today as I go through you know likely P. Ryan um, Noah Gray like these are all guys that I typically so typically whenever I would do single entry stuff I would usually almost always punt like min salary because in those single entries you can very easily finish you know top not even like cash in like top five top four top three percent by having you know the cheapest guy that scores you like four or five points now because they're going to be scoring identically if not slightly better at least from a value range as the defenses and sometimes as the kickers and stuff so I've almost always exclusively built with punts down here in some form or fashion and that's why like you might see it be aggressive or something but like I have three Juju three Noah Gray two Isaiah you know four uh, P Ryan which this isn't you know that aggressive we're probably going to see I, I, I would envision you know P Ryan uh, starting to push at least like you know, probably uh, 11% ownership by the time the slate goes live. Um, probably going to try and get... I'm okay with 5 Watson, truly. Like, uh, honestly, like, this is where I start, like, truly, like, trying to pay attention of where I'm at and where I'm going at the bottom. But these are just kind of where we're at. Like, I've learned from, from NBA specifically and esports, this shit's just going to be absolute luck if if one of these guys gets in based on these salaries. Like, if these guys blow up and, and go slightly higher than what we're doing here, like Justin Hill or Justice Hill, um, going to look fucking terrible on paper. Uh, but in terms of what he can do on the slate and what he can do because I'm already fading Derrick Henry, it would not make sense to me to not have some type of exposure to Justice Hill. Uh, even if you were just approaching the slate in general, you would want exposure to Justice Hill if and when uh, Derrick Henry either runs into an issue or this game script goes out of his lean, especially when that guy is so expensive and he's expected to carry, you know, nearly a third of the ownership. Um, you know, having lineups that have Justice Hill directly going with my, you know, Derrick Henry fade, that's, you know, at least that's how I justify that stuff. But, like, honestly, any of these guys work out, it's going to be pure luck. Like, I... I, I'm not I'm not going to lose the slate based on what these guys do. I'm just going to have exposure to all of them. Um, lastly, in terms of captain position, now, actually, as I'm talking through this, I don't know if I want to make this video public or behind the paywall. I might make it public to give people an idea of 
what I do. Either way, these are the captain positions that we're working with, or that I typically do. So when we look at the salary and stuff, now this is drastically different because you know we have the two arguably the best quarterbacks in the league, fantasy point per dollar range. We have Kelsey, we have Derrick Henry. Um, typically, you know, it's the wide receiver one on the slate from the winning team. You know, then it's quarterbacks, and then wide receiver one probably on the losing team, and then you know so on and so forth. So typically, I would chase that you know, wide receiver one, the guy who's clearly the best guy in the slate, you know, so on and so forth. The fact that we have the two quarterbacks on there instantly makes it to where, okay, cool, I don't got to worry about them in the captain because I wouldn't have them anyway. They're the most expensive. I think any lineup that has Lamar Jackson or Mahomes in the captain is dead money. Um, You may argue that that's a stupid thing to say, but in terms of looking at the 99th percentile outcomes, if Jackson and Mahomes are scoring extremely well, yes, a real likelihood that both these guys are spreading the field or spreading the ball out between people, but um, there's most likely guys at a better value and a real chance of outscoring both of these guys due to what they're doing on the field, um, and so like that's automatically a full fade for me. Uh, in the cabin. and and I'm and I have them locked into the flex, like duh, you know, if I'm locking them in the flex, I physically cannot play up captain, but that's what I always go through. Um, Kelsey. I'm at 19 lineups now. I gotta, I gotta bring more in because I deleted one. Uh, I'm trying to get this done before I leave, uh, and before I take a shower and, and you know take off and stuff. Um, the fact that I don't have Kelsey in captain, which I thought I would, I will probably end up bumping this to at least four in in the flex position. Um, but in terms of the guys who are probably the best captains on the slate, now I would argue that Bateman is probably there as well, but. Just for me, as I'm trying this new thing out, as I said, I haven't really approached this aggressively in this form yet. I would probably not get to Bateman um, today. I'm more so just trying to see if the process is going to show me um, any type of stuff or like any any results. See if this is even worth uh, chasing after like the first like three weeks and stuff. Um, but there's no reason to ever play, you know, a value in the captain. There's no reason to um, play a quarterback because. You know, that's just not what's going to happen. You should always play wide receiver and a tight end in the flex. Now, the fact that Pacheco is under owned based on his projected points here, that that's why I'm probably getting to a, a good amount of uh, Pacheco here. But even with that said, like this hasn't been finalized. These will be the three guys that I'm probably targeting. What I would then do, which I'm not going to do here, is I will look at the Pacheco lines. Now, yet again, this is such an interesting slate because it's, the, you know, Totals are huge. Offenses can be spread out across the board. Pacheco can get there as a receiver on the team. Like, when you look at what Kansas City is dealing with, Rice, you know, Kelsey, and Pacheco are pretty much all wide wide receivers here, okay? The fact that we don't have as many running backs for Kansas City because, you know, CEH is, uh, you know, I guess seesawing on killing himself or whatever, so he's not even in, he's not playing today. And when we look at where everybody's at here, Pacheco, P. Ryan, Steele, like, that's why you want exposure to Steele, that's why you want exposure to P. Ryan, but Pacheco should be, you know, a huge contributor in this race from a pass-catching perspective. Not even, his, his running back uh, impact on this game is almost, I'm not even acknowledging that. It's more so what I'm expecting him to do just on the ground. I think he has a real chance of being the, Honestly, probably number one in terms of targets on this team by the end of the day, it'll probably be him, Kelsey. Rice is, you know, going to have to, he's not going to be dealing with nearly as much defense as uh, as Kelsey and stuff. And anyway, at this point, I'm kind of rambling. I mean, I've already done this stuff. I'm just trying to get my thoughts out for everybody to see how I typically approach things. But this is, uh, this is probably my approach of what I'll be doing. And then, you know, lastly, for my own approach, uh, as I'm just, you know, driving or I'll be at you know, gas stations or whatever, or taking a break. I'm just going to enter the 20 lineups that I make here in every, you know, $3 and below 20 max I can over the next seven hours and stuff, or, or over the next day until the slate starts. So that's my um, view. That is my uh, quick thoughts on the slate. Um, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Either way, I uh, just want to put that out there.